Or out of sync. I really hate that too. I hate that being out of sync stuff. Oh, um, something else, um, going along the same lines as mechanical fingers and whatnot, I was playing around a little bit, and I saw a guy on YouTube that, um, created, um, this mechanical finger extension, pretty freaking ingenious, so I took his idea and added my own little spin on it. And this is basically it, right here. Now, there are a ton of uses, a ton of ways that you can use this. Mechanical hands, demonic hands, witch hands, when you want that, you know, the eerie effect. I'll show you how it works. I just simply slide out my finger into that ring, push it all the way down. Then I take my end, the top part of my finger, I slide it into a little pipe right here. Then all I gotta do is this. Simply bend my finger. So imagine having a full hand. When you have this type of dexterity. You probably freak somebody the hell out, <laughs> which would be awesome. But I plan on um, making molds. Well, I think I've already made one mold, but I want to do it again. Making molds for these, and then if people want kits, I'm gonna sell them as kits. You know, so that way they can take this and they can use it towards whatever cosplay or costume that uh, they want to do. You know, because like this right here, I modified it a little bit towards this. Which is, which is the basis for my calabino hand. Like if you notice, I don't have the pointed tip. Cause I don't need that for him. His, his fingers are blunt in the end. You know, but it's still the same exact structure as this, just, just without the pointed tip. So I'm definitely going to um, sell those um, when me and Jeannie do the panel at KamoraCon this year. I'm actually going to build one live right there so they can see uh, the whole process basically. Um, but yeah, if you guys want one, let me know. You can send me a whisper. And I'll give you guys the price for it or whatnot. So you got the invoice or that good stuff. So you can have your own. Oh, no problem, uh, Spliff, for the wall text. No problem. Use the force desktop audio to use video timestamp as a base. Alright, that's all. Uh, try that.
I'm gonna walk my good eyes. Cool. Alright. Let's try this, bro. Let's take your sagely advice. Watch desktop to be all your timestamps. Alright. Go. Let's see if that works, man. Hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. So how you been, Spliff man? What you been up to? Hey, Quartoon Freak. What's up, man? How you been? But yeah. That's straight. And you notice, I only did two. Top and bottom. I could definitely do a third one if I want. Uh, I don't think I really want to have to. Because once again, it's going to be anchored to, you know, the rest, the rest of the hand. So, I don't think we'll need that. Um, now, because it is bending here, obviously, I have to have something here that can go with, that can work with that bend. And what I'm going to use is going to be uh, something that's called open cell foam. Open cell foam is cushion foam. They use them you know, to build the cushions in cars or your chairs, that stuff. And you can get this in different thicknesses. So I'm going to be using this as a bridge between these fingers and the, I guess it's the back of my head call it, basically. So, cut out a strip, put it in there, and be good. You can glue this with hot glue, you can glue it with um, crazy glue, with barge, you know, welders wood, or contact cement, all that works. Um, I'm probably going to stick to either the crazy glue or the contact cement, one of those two for this. Um, and this stuff here, you have give it stretches a little bit you know um and the whole entire glove is going to be coated in latex well either latex or it might use the rubberized uh one of the two for it uh, but either way it is still a rubbery coating which has to give to it you know so when, once i do that it's going to blend in with this perfectly so you won't even be able to tell what this is it'll just simply be part of the glove Now I'm going to start gluing the sides of this bad boy on here, and I'm going to be using strictly this, which is the, um, well this is a, a crazy glue made by a guy named Bob Smith, um, this here is like $8.25 on Amazon, you can only find this on Amazon, really, really, really good crazy glue. Um, it's also a lot bigger than what you can find at a Home Depot or Lowe's. And the ones at Home Depot and Lowe's, it is $6 a change. So for $2 more, you get a lot more, you know, in the bottle. A whole lot more. Alright, so I need to sand down both the edges. So I'll do that real quick.
What does uh, HPU mean, Cartoon Freak? Is my audio still lagging bad? Still out of sync? Yeah, because I took your advice, but I went ahead and I checked that box in my advanced section, so hopefully it works. Oh, nice. You're playing PLE with Horror, Kalazia, and Trainer? Nice. How is that game, Smith? I have it, I just haven't had a chance to actually play it. <laughs> How is it? Reason why I am using this and not hot glue is because one, I want a nice clean seam without worrying about any glue oozing out. And two, um, even if that were to happen using this type of glue or even a barge, you know, or you have a contact cement, it sands really, really well. You know, because when this stuff dries, it dries hard. So when you sand it, it's like a powder almost. Um, and that just makes it easier for you to make stuff seem to be seamless, which is what you want. Yeah, last night, uh, me and Jeannie worked on uh, her shoulders. Now, if you look at the picture, it's cloth. We're building out a foam. You know, and I spent some time last night, took some paper, laid it over her body, did my sketching from it, uh, and then, you know, drew up my pattern, finalized my lines, <clears throat> put it onto the EVA foam, and got the heat gun out and just started bending the crap out of it. <laughs> so I get the shape that I need. Uh, and I even went ahead one step further and I cut a little wedge into it just to help. And once again, I glued the wedge with contact cement, well, well, crazy glue. And uh, went ahead and smoothed it out with my palm sander. And this is it. Of course, we still have to do the trim pieces all on the edge, but that's how it fits. You know, and I still want to go back into it and look at a couple more pictures of the concept art and see if there are any folds or wrinkles. And then if I do see some, I'm going to go ahead and draw them in. And with the Dremel, just you know shape in those wrinkles to, to, to help, help add to the illusion of it might be in cloth you know there you go animal. <laughs> Everything might come crashing down. Yeah. When you get a chance to get up the actual boot itself. Okay. I'm going to show you guys what one of the completed boots, well, nearly completed boots, I should say. Um, the bottom part of the shoe, shoe area, 